Hello and welcome to Chocolate Covered Games Monthly Melt for the month of July 2022. We normally start with our top fives. Yep. And for this month, Tim got the pick. Yep. Uh, so for this month, I decided to go with our top five favorite paintings uh, because art is important. So for me, I had a hard time coming up with five. I had a hard time minimum myself to five. Uh, but once I, I started looking uh, and the paintings I knew, uh, I, I came up with seven. Narrowed it, well, really eight, but I didn't think my number one should be Your eighth paint. grade painting by me. Yeah. Uh, which that would be my number one. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was of, it was either Jeff Burton or Hutt Strickland's Ray Vestas card. Uh, but Tim doesn't have a picture of that. I think it's behind my little armoire in my, my bedroom. Uh, we used all the paints I did in school as kindling to start fires in the house. Um, so, I came up with five, mm -hmm. well, seven. I narrowed it down to seven. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of like a five ABC. Yep. Well, because I, I couldn't, uh, two of those have different meanings than the one. Yeah, well then you choose the one that means the most. Well, that, that'd be hard because there's two that are tied. Then you choose the coin flip to decide which one means uh, the coin flip yes. So for number five, mm -hmm. uh, this is by artist Sam Bass, right. who was the first officially licensed NASCAR artist. Okay. Uh, he actually designed a lot of artwork for the cars. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of his artwork wasn't actually paintings. It became artwork on the, the vehicle for the sponsors mm -hmm. um, but he did do a bunch of like lithographs um, and so there, there were two lithographs the one of Davy Allison uh, the one of Alan Kowicki who I both really liked when I was little and then there was a, a third one it was called Forever Champs mm -hmm. and it was them racing in the sky and um, Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace on the bottom with their flags uh, out the window doing a Polish victory lap. Um, but I didn't choose any of those. Uh, so my number five is uh, Sam Bass, and this is actually a cover to a program okay. at a track uh, from Charlotte Motor Speedway, and it's called Sundown Showdown, which I'm guessing Tim will put it up here. Probably. Um, and this was, I believe, the year after they ran the uh, the All Star Race at night mm -hmm. um, for the first time, which was called One Hot Night, and that's where Kyle Petty and Davy Allison had the wreck. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's Davy Allison's helmet, Kyle Petty's helmet, the vision of that in the, the face mask of those. Um, but again, you'll probably see that up here hopefully there I'll make my viewers do work yeah and research uh, <laughs> but yeah I just think it's really cool uh, I like Sam Bass's artwork because I love NASCAR um, that's really about it it's probably the most in-depth I'll go on any of these uh, which is weird that's my number five but again I love NASCAR I like the Sam Bass artwork and, and I, I just love all the cars he came up with. I probably could have just picked a car paint scheme. Because mm -hmm. that is art. Mm. I said paintings. Well, this really isn't a painting. Yeah, see, wait. Well, wait, wait, it, it, is, it is a painting because he did make it a painting. It was a painting, and then they made it the cover for the, yeah. the program. Okay. Well, and all those ones that he... All those car designs, <laughs> he did... His, I don't know if they were paintings or drawings. They were art. They were probably drawings. I thought he painted his, his concept. Well, I mean, but... here he states this was the game-changing painting of his career. Yeah, well, that, so. that was probably a painting there yeah. at that point. Yeah, so much like Doug, mine aren't paintings. This, my first one's like a Lego sculpture and then like a tree outside. Yeah. 
Yeah, so my number five. Five uh, is John Francis Millet, the Angelus. It's the painting. Uh, this is a very interesting piece of art, as you can see somewhere above us. Uh, again, I'll have to watch this to know what Tim's talking about. It's of uh, two peasant people in the the, the uh, village side of France tending the field, and you can see the the church in the background. And it looks like they're taking time to do like one of their daily prayers out in the field. But originally, it was thought that you know this one box of turnips wasn't a turnip; it was supposed to be like a baby casket and whatnot. But then people were like, oh, that was just like a rumor and whatnot. But thanks to technology that we have today, you know, they were able to, you know, scan through the painting and find out, you know, there was like them standing over a little baby casket and whatnot. Mm. Which I always love art that has, you know, these paintings where a painter painted something on top of something expecting no one to ever find it because, you know, that they wouldn't have had the idea of this technology existing. And just to see that this painting was some, supposed to be something else. So, you know, instead of them being in the field taking their daily, you know, prayer affirmation in the side of the France, it's them standing there supposed to be looking somber over, like, the loss of their baby. So, it's, it's a very interesting art piece. Uh, there's tons of video essays about this piece online. Um, but yeah, that's my number five. It's just, you know, a bunch of sad looking French peasants standing over a box of turnip that, you know, once the baby casket. Hmm. So, that's. Uh, called The Angelus by Jean Francis Millet. Uh, so my number four is actually the only one on my list that we own, a version of. Yeah. Uh, and this is by uh, Joseph Satari, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Uh, Satari is a I want to say prodigy of Rockwell. He did help Rockwell at the end of his career, um, which is why so many of the Satari paintings look like a Rockwell. A Rockwell, because um, he, he did uh, get to help paint some minor details on some of uh, Rockwell's last paintings. Um, but Satari then became the official uh, painter for the Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and um, the my number four is just the Boy Scout Centennial painting mm -hmm. that he did um, we own a print of this and it's hanging on in our living room yeah. it's uh, no we do have that other huge picture I should have looked you did that yeah. uh, anyways uh, just uh, being in Scouts, I thought this was uh, it was cool. Boy Scout Centennial, being part of all that, uh, and I figured out of anything they they sold at the time, having one of these prints of uh, the Centennial painting from somebody that studied from Norman Rockwell uh, would be really cool. That's about as much as you're gonna get on any of my, my paintings other than that first one. <laughs> Uh, that was your number four. My number four. Four. It's probably the one I have the least information about. Of the uh, my five here. Yes, it's a painting. What? No, well, I, that's all the information you have. I have a little bit more information than that. Uh, is uh, from Antonio. Oh, it's either Antonio or Antoine. Volan. Volan. V O L L O N. So you should at least know how to say these people's names if you're going to well, let their painting. Well, they're centuries old, and I couldn't find a pronunciation of it. I did on my guy. Yeah. Uh, but the painting is called What's Mount. Up? What? The other guy. So, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, the painting is called Mound of Butter. It's from the realism period. And it is what you expect it's a mound of butter inside of a cheesecloth with a wooden knife next to it and two eggs on the table for some reason. Hmm. You know, it's it's just a piece of art that I look at and be like, that looks like real butter. 
those are eggs. I enjoy looking at I mean, there's no real massive significance to this piece of art. It's just really nice realism. Hmm. Um, other than that, you know, I couldn't tell you uh, much about it. I've, I've seen like one video where a person was talking about it in a museum. Yeah. So at least made museum worthiness at one point. Um, but other than that, it's just a painting I enjoy. It's so much, it's my number four favorite painting. Okay. It's So my number three okay. uh, is actually uh, maybe it's actually your number four. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, maybe one of the mm, maybe it's the most famous painting on my list. Uh, I don't know. I think my number five is the most famous on my list. But uh, uh, we'll see. This is uh, from Norman Rockwell, and it's called The Scoutmaster. Okay. Um, again, it's a very iconic Boy Scout painting, mm -hmm. uh, with the Scoutmaster standing there by the fire, the tents in the background with the kids sleeping. Uh, again, Satari did do a newer version of this, uh, called The Scoutmaster. Uh, but Rockwell's came out, or it was painted in 1956. Uh, just again, a very iconic Boy Scout uh, image, and uh, really drew people in during that time. You know, scouting being very, very popular, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and Norman Rockwell was a huge supporter uh, of the Boy Scouts, so. That's my number three, yep. the Scoutmaster. Uh, my number three is an artist crossover with you, not a painting crossover. And that is Norman Rockwell. I went with his uh, painting, A Scout is Loyal, from 1932, part of his uh, O series, where yeah. they had one of each thing. Uh, this one is not one of his more popular ones. But I enjoy it. It's the one where uh, George Washington goes to standing in the background, yeah, pointing, yeah. and like there's a scout from just staring where he's pointing. I, I don't know why I like goes to George Washington pointing the way, but I find it fascinating. Um, once again, to echo what Doug said, you know, scouting was very popular. Norman Rockwell did a bunch of scouting paintings. There's hundreds of them. There's actually a website that you can go to that shows all of Norman Rockwell's scout I paintings. Think he did hundreds of them. He did pretty he well. Did a lot. He's done three series of The Oath Alone, so that's what, 12 times 3, that's 36, plus all the offshoots. Tablet for us. Um, I bet you he's got pretty close to 100. Um, well, he, he redid uh, Scatter is a little in 1942. And then there was one more. Uh, no, that, those were the only two. Uh, not uh, according to the website that I used. I'll have to show it to you when we well, go. I'm using the Scout website. Uh, don't trust the Scout website, they don't update it enough. Um, with that one, that is Washington and Lincoln mm. in the background. Um, but yeah, you know, that's my only Norman Rockwell. Probably not Norman Rockwell's most famous. That probably goes to Thankful, which is the one everybody thinks of as a Thanksgiving dinner where yeah. the people are standing with the yeah. turkey that's 46 pounds and whatnot. Well, and, you know, yeah, that one, uh, one that did make my list from, from Rockwell, but was right on that cusp mm -hmm. was um, and I forget the title of it but with the umpires standing there and it's raining yeah uh, it's like a tough decision or a tough call it's called yeah. a tough call yeah um, to me that's like one of the most iconic baseball paintings yeah um, yeah Norman Rockwell just when you think Americana yeah he, he, he's painting. the American painter yeah I mean, unless you're going like Southwest paintings, and that goes to somebody else, you know. Yeah. Was Pollock American? No, I don't know, Jackson Pollock fan. But I believe he was. Uh, but yeah, that was my number three, uh, Scott Zolo from 19. Thirty-two. Yeah. Uh, so then we're at my number two. Correct. So my number two is probably the largest 
painting mm -hmm. on either list. Oh yeah, my next ones are pretty small. Uh, so this one uh, is a cyclorama, mm -hmm. which were very popular at the end of the 1800s. Uh, and there aren't many that survived. A lot of them were burnt. Well, I don't blame them. The size, uh, they're bigger than this room that we're filming in. But this one was actually painted, I believe, to be used in Chicago. Okay. Um, and so this is called the Battle of Gettysburg, but it, better known as the Gettysburg Cyclorama, uh, which is currently in Gettysburg. Uh, you can go and see it. It was painted by Paul Filippito. Okay. Uh, and it depicts the uh, last day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, Pickett's Charge. Um, if you ever get the chance to go see this painting, definitely see it. Um, it's, it's one of those that you can't look at online and, and, and appreciate. You've got to actually go and see just the, the grandeur of it the size because I mean, you can stand there and just take your time work your way the whole way around uh, and for for me being a, a history buff and the, the Battle of Gettysburg I've actually seen the, the cyclorama uh, a bunch of time so he used Flippito used uh, he arrived at Gettysburg in, in 1882 he used photographs so he could depict the, the whole scene. Uh, I went from there and um, he painted himself into the painting, which is, is unique. He's actually standing uh, by a tree. He, he didn't make himself his face on every person. That's yeah. it. Like, man, all these people look exactly the same. Um, so again just the, the magnitude size of this painting the um, the, the solemnness when you go in there mm -hmm. uh, and, and see this painting because you go into the room it's, it's lit you can't see the painting they turn the lights down the painting gets lit up uh, I know they, they do do a, an evening with the painting where it's like you have to pay a big amount. You go in and uh, they do some special things. With yeah, it. I think that'd be really cool. Somebody to do. like walks around, and tells you like each section. Yeah, it, it's a little more in depth than what they do when you just go into it. Um, that so this received such a public claim that he was contracted to paint a second version. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one was in Chicago, and the second one went to Boston. Okay. Uh, and it receives such critical acclaim and I believe that there was a, a third one uh, and the one that is in Gettysburg I believe the one that is in Gettysburg is the Boston one uh, I, I gotta do some looking into that uh, yeah I believe that's the one that is in Gettysburg is the one that was commissioned for Boston the one from Chicago I believe is lost to history but yeah, that's my number two, Battle of Gettysburg, Gettysburg Cyclorama. And that will appear in some form around <laughs> it. I don't know. It won't be scrolling across the screen. I've yet to figure out how to make images scroll. Yeah. But I'll figure out something. Maybe just pieces will flash up every now and then. Uh, so my, my number two is uh, an artist that most people, I think, would know. And that is Bob Ross, his painting, Shades of Grey. Uh, he doesn't use many colors in this one. In fact, could you guess what colors he uses in this? Bright yellows and pinks. Close. He, he, he actually doesn't use gray. He uses uh, brown, blue, and white. Hmm. He mixes brown and blue to make gray, which completely lies to me everything I learned in school, that black and white make gray. Huh. But apparently brown and blue make gray just as well. Uh, you know, this is one of those paintings that I stumbled across uh, thanks to Twitch. 
because Twitch has their own Bob Ross channel that just runs constantly with Bob Ross paintings from the Joy of Paintings. Uh, that's how I learned he had a kid that, you know, had a mullet. So, you know, his family is strong with the hair game, him with a fro, <laughs> his son with a mullet. I think his son still runs the, the Bob Ross schools yet. I, I do enjoy Bob Ross paintings. It, it's, a, it's one of the best things Twitch has going because you can just put it in the background and then there are paintings going on. It looks sort of like me in red green. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this painting he says at the beginning of the episode of The Joy of Painting, you know, he always gives a little story about what they're painting. And this one came across when he was dealing with a, a person said they love his show, but they could never paint because they were colorblind. So he, everything, you know, looks different. And he said, well, you know, you can just paint with simple colors and different in shading. So he's like, I'm just gonna make this painting all with gray, with highlights and white. So he mixes his brown and his blue to make his gray. And it's a standard uh, Bob Ross painting still, you know, it has the trees, it has the cabinet, it has the mountains. It doesn't have trees. Yep. It has happy little trees. No, this one has like the tall sequoia, like the ones that shoot out the front. The angry big trees. Yeah. Not Sassy Brooks, like I said in yeah. the game. Which I'm still waiting for an episode where he says Sassy Brook. I'm sure he has. I, I stand by the claim that Bob Ross has said that one. At least. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, it's standard Bob Ross, you know, it's outdoors, woodsy, mountain background, but all just in different shades of gray with highlights of white. It's very fascinating, you know. And that's my number two, Bob Ross. Could have been, I could have picked any Bob Ross, clearly, because they're all fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I almost went with, there was there was a stage to the show where he did a, I forget what he calls it, where he puts a, a thing on the canvas and then he whites it with one color and then he pulls off the thing he pulls, so it makes different shapes, like it makes like an apple oh, yeah. or a, a circle. Yeah. And then you paint in that area with things coming out of it yeah. to make it look like it's coming out of the painting. He went through that phase. Those are all fantastic. Yeah, Bob Ross artwork is incredible. I always watch that up with our grandparents because mm -hmm. um, they only had like five channels and PBS, PBS was one of the only single ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I watched Bob Ross a lot, and I would love to be able to paint like that. I'm not very artistic. Yeah, that always blew me away too, with as old as those shows were. You know, people would send in pictures of their paintings from the ones they learned. And I'm thinking at the time, well, these are people that had, you know, the film camera, so they literally had to take a picture of their painting. Yeah. They had to learn how to paint, paint, get film, take a picture, develop the picture, send it through mail, like an envelope yeah. mail. I'm like, you tell that to a kid today that they had to go through all these stuff so they couldn't just like airdrop their photo to this guy. Yeah. They'd be like crazy. Well, they might have been taking Polaroids. Uh, they could have been taking Polaroids. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking it was still a filmed camera. I actually saw somebody within the last month who had a Polaroid at work. Well, they're still making them. Yes. Yeah, they, they, you can buy them up at Target. Yeah. Uh, last uh, Christmas, one of the co-workers for the, the exchange gave Polaroids as gifts. But not to me. Because for some reason, as the only guy I work, they always give me a different gift. I'm like, why they would give you... give you scented candles and... Yeah. Well, no, like, like oh, here's here's a Polaroid for you. Polaroid for... Here's a tin of popcorn. I'm like, I could have used the Polaroid. <laughs> but yeah, so they could have sent Bob Ross a Polaroid, so they didn't have to go get it developed. Yeah. Still, I had to find the address to send it to. Yeah. Uh, so, we're up to my number one. Yep. Uh, and my number one is uh, Norman Rockwell. Okay. And it's called uh, Tomorrow's Leader. Is that the one with the little kid standing inside the bigger kid's uniform? No. Uh, that's... I forget what that one's called. So that's probably his most famous scout painting. No, the the scoutmaster. You think? Yeah. Eh. Um, maybe followed by this one. Okay. Uh, this is where it's the, the boy scout standing in front of the be prepared. Uh, oh yeah, I do remember this one. See, look, I'm acting like it's here. Uh, and all the merit badges are behind him. Uh, okay, you can just look at it on my tablet for right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I don't know if this is the most famous one or the Scoutmaster is. These are two very, very, very popular mm -hmm. Rockwell Scout paintings. Um, this is probably the one that most makes me think of scouting, scouting, and and, and painting. So when you gave me that this was our, our fives, mm -hmm. those were the first two that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. So um, I knew they were going to be on my list. And um, the, the Cyclorama was the third thing that came to my mind. So uh, I knew those were going to be my top three in, in, in some order. But uh, Tomorrow's Leader to me is just, yeah, between that and Scoutmaster, the two most iconic scout paintings make you think of Boy Scouting, make you think of Americana, make you think Norman Rockwell. Um, again, uh, both those paintings came out in the 50s, Scoutmaster 56, Tomorrow's Leader 59. So that's my number one. I know it's not a lot of different Except Sam Bass is way different than... <laughs> no, those days he drew those uh, Boy Scout cars, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's my top five. Uh, now for all my honorable mentions, which I <laughs> yeah. have zero because I follow the rules. Uh, my number one is the only one that I could have physically brought here. Because uh, we own it, not a print, but the actual painting itself, and that's from Andy Russell, uh, Castle Creek. Uh, if you want to hold up your tablet for a second, you don't have to show the screen. But this painting that I own is roughly smaller than this tablet, and it ran me, I think, almost three hundred bucks when we bought it. Originally. I don't know. It, it was close because uh, it wasn't that much. It, it Mom would have never bought you that rework day. What? Mom wouldn't have bought you that. No, this is one that I bought because this. Oh. One, because you've got Andy Russell paintings like well, three or four years in a row for your birthday. I, I think like five years in a row. They, they would give me the prints. The, print, the prints were about $55. But one year I, I saved up my money and I actually bought one of the painting paintings on a print. Now of course I had to buy his smallest painting painting he had on sale. And that was, that was almost 300 bucks. Do you even know where it is? Yeah, uh -huh. I know exactly where it is. It's on top of my uh, dresser. It's on top of, of the, the prints. I was gonna bring it in, but I didn't want to bring it. Um, but yeah, uh, Andy Russell is a painter outside of you know, the Buffalo area yeah. in New York. Um, the, I guess his biggest claim to fame right now is he has puzzles out to put it through, uh, uh, who are the, people that, the puzzle people that start with R? Ravensburger. Yeah, uh, cause he's part of their artist collection. Didn't know that. Uh, I only found that out when uh, me and my one friend went to Walmart and we were walking to the back there and you had to pass the puzzles and whatnot. I'm like, I recognize that box art. And it was one of the prints I own. And I'm like, and it says his name on the box. It's like an Andy Russell part of the painter series. I'm like, holy cow, he's got puzzles made now. Which I thought was fantastic. I, I will say I do like Andy Russell's work. Um, he definitely has a style that he goes with. Uh, the painting I chose for number one isn't the biggest one we own. Uh, the biggest one we own uh, is called Stepping Stones, I believe. And it's of a modern house next to a, a brook. Uh, but that, that one. No, that's the one that we have the, the painting painting of. That's the... I like that. That is nice. Uh, he you know he did that? But yes. Oh. I know he did that. He also, he's also worked with companies before. Uh, for some reason, uh, who made the SRR truck? Is that Chevy? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, Chevy did a, a, a painting line to promote their SSR truck. Or SRR truck. I can't remember which one it was called. And SSR. SSR truck. And he was one of the painters chosen. So there's there's just a painting where it's like his paint. He just painted a truck into it. Um, but... Yeah. It's, what? Oh, yours is Castle Creek. Castle Creek is the the one we own. That's the painting painting. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. Um, you know, on the back it's, it's signed and numbered. Um, but yeah, uh, really fantastic artist. He still goes around and does 
art shows. You can buy his art on. Yeah, he wasn't there this year at the Harrisburg Art Fest. Oh, that's insane. Uh, you can I still. Think you have that one. Yep, I do have that one. I, I own like 12 of his paint. Well, I own 12 prints and one painting. Well, they're very colorful. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I could have chose any of any Andy Russell and been happy, but I went with the one I actually own painting wise to say, hey, I own a painting. <laughs> uh, I would have brought it with and shown it, but it would have been too small to see. I would have to be like holding it near the camera. Uh, but yeah, that's my number five for this month. Uh, it was an excellent list, way better than the dogs. I think we can all agree. Uh, if you enjoyed our top five, leave a comment down below. What are your favorite paintings out there? Uh, you can give reasons why if you want, or just say, hey, these pictures are pretty. I like them. Yeah. So let's do it. I enjoy Tom Seaver by Andy Warhol. Yeah. Or, you know, Andy Warhol by Andy Warhol. You might love MC Escher paintings because you're trying to figure out where they go. Or uh, Salvador Dali paints because yeah. you love melting clocks. Yeah. But, uh, or do, do you have like a grandiose? It's, it's not. So one of my thoughts was it's not actually a painting. Okay. Uh, so I didn't put it on the list. Okay. Because it's actually, uh, it, it is a painting, but it's painted on the ceiling of a building. Oh, it's still a painting. It's not the Sistine Chapel. Okay. Uh, it was the, uh, uh, what the heck's it called? The Apothecary of George Washington, is that what it's called? Uh, it's, oh, the, the Apothesis of Washington. Is this the one where he's, this, like, ascending to heaven? Yeah. Where, yeah, the Apothesis of Washington. I know this one. Um, where he, it's in the Capitol building. Yeah. I mean, it's a painting. Yeah. Paintings have to be painted. Yeah. I mean, graffiti's technically paintings. They're out Well, that's paintings. some of the top artists now. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a painting you enjoy, whether it's a painting on canvas or... No digital paint, because it doesn't involve paint. <laughs> uh, again, let us know that in the, uh, the comments. Yep. Uh, also, leave suggestions for uh, future top fives. We're always open for ideas, so we don't have to think of them ourselves. Yeah, Game-related, non-gaming-related, anything. Yeah. We'll, we'll top five any suggestion, within reason. <laughs>